Hello, souls and demons, and welcome to today's story. Titled, I Thought My Squirrel Caught the Bubonic Plague, Now I Realize It's Something Far Worse. Written by J. Group. I never pictured myself keeping a pet squirrel. I'd had cats and dogs, birds and gerbils as pets when I was a kid. For the last couple of years, I hadn't had any animals. Still, when I saw the baby squirrel lying in the grass on my way home from work, I had to stop to check it out. The little guy looked only a few weeks old, its fur barely grown in. It was shaking and squeaking and making sad little noises with its tiny mouth. He was just a few yards away in the grass. I couldn't understand where his mother could be. Maybe she had been hit by a car, I thought sadly to myself. I picked the poor thing up in my bare hands and cradled its tiny body in my palms, careful not to rush it with my oversized man mitts. The little thing had been shivering when I picked it up, but it settled down after a few minutes and fell asleep. Its tiny breaths quick and its heartbeat fast and steady, beating so hard I could feel it through its back. I made the decision then that I needed to take it home and nurse it back to health. I got back to my apartment and made a little house for it out of a shoebox. I put a towel inside and the tiny squirrel curled up immediately and went to sleep. The next morning I had to figure out what to feed the thing, as its hungry squeaks and squeals woke me up with the rising sun. With a quick check online I found out I could feed the tiny creature with goat milk and a couple other easily obtainable ingredients. I left him in his little box alone and went out to get supplies feeling oddly guilty as I closed the door on its pitiful calls for its mother. When I got home, I found it asleep in the shoebox again. It woke up to the sound of my voice. I poured the goat milk into a baby bottle that I had purchased and managed to nurse the baby squirrel with the bottle. It sucked greedily on the goat milk and made happy little burping noises and ran around a bit afterwards. I let it out on the floor of my apartment and it scurried around and dropped its little turds on my area rug with reckless abandon. It was pretty adorable. I came to love the little guy as he grew in my home and I nursed him back to health. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with him though. He was always hungry and never seemed to be full, no matter how much I fed him. And he grew very quickly into the largest squirrel I had ever seen, nearly the size of a cat. Whatever hormonal issues he had, I thought, it didn't affect him that much. He'd still run around and like to play with toys but something seemed odd about him. He didn't look completely squirrel-like. He looked like a mutant, with his long, sharp teeth and oversized body. The differences between him and the rest of his kind only grew more obvious as he got bigger. Then he began to develop little red marks all over his body. I googled the shape of them and found a nursery rhyme, one that I had heard many times as a child. Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. But what did that have to do with a rash? I kept reading more and more horrified. The song was one they taught the children back in the Middle Ages. Ring around the rosy was the distinctive rash that accompanied the plague. It was believed that bad smells caused the sickness and so a pocket full of posies would supposedly keep you healthy. But even still, Many died and were turned to ashes. The song was a reminder that we all fall down dead eventually. I refused to believe my little pet squirrel could have black plague. It was impossible, I thought. The little bugger was cute as the dickens. There was no possible way he could be carrying a disease that wiped out at least a third of Europe in the Middle Ages. The good news was the internet said there was a cure for the bubonic plague. So I walked Mr. Peanut Butter down to the nearest veterinary clinic and told them my suspicions. They were not particularly welcoming, but agreed to treat my pet squirrel on the condition that I left him with them and went to the nearest hospital to seek treatment, since I had most likely been exposed. No sense starting another pandemic, they said. The hospital wasn't very welcoming either. When I told them my situation, I had already started developing ring-shaped rashes on my skin as well. They forced me to call everyone I knew and worked with. My boss wasn't happy I'd been coming in for my shifts and exposing people. But I explained I hadn't known until just then. I told them I had just been trying to do the right thing, 
attempting to save a poor dying baby squirrel. When I was released from the hospital, I went back to pick up Mr. Peanut Butter. The veterinary clinic was just about to open when I pulled up, so I waited in the parking lot. I waited for a while and no one came to the front to open the door. I double checked the hours on their sign and tried the door handle. It wasn't locked, so I went inside. The first thing that stood out was the blood. It was everywhere, covering the walls, floors, and ceiling, all over the lobby and behind the reception desk. I found myself walking through it, despite rational common sense that would normally tell a person to call the police and not to walk into a crime scene. I had a terrible suspicion and couldn't stop. My brain felt funny since the rings had begun to form on my skin. I had begun to lose all sense of self-preservation. My shoes made gummy, sticky sounds as I stepped through puddles of dark, hemolyzed blood. I walked up to the counter on trembling legs and looked over to the other side. There was no one there, just more blood and lots of it. Proceeding carefully, I went back into the first examination room. I opened the door and let out a choked whimper. There was no one in there, just more blood. Gallons and gallons of blood, still fresh. Still no doctors, no veterinary techs, no pets or their owners. What the hell had happened here? A voice in my head whispered that I knew what had happened here. I scratched at the red circle in the back of my hand. A red splotch was at its center and it was intensely itchy. I couldn't stop scratching it. Suddenly, and noticed blood was starting to leak out of it and pus. I went into the next examination room and the next and the next. Nothing but blood, blood, blood. I heard a crash from the back room and found myself walking slowly towards the door that opened up to the kennels and workspaces at the back of the building. I opened the door and stepped inside the large room. Cages were stacked to my right where animals were hiding, terrified, in the backs of their kennels. The dogs whimpered, but the cats were silent. None of them dared to hiss or make a sound to agitate the large furry form which lurked on the other end of the room. The creature which crouched over the human remains was once my pet squirrel, Mr. Peanut Butter. But now it was something much worse. It had grown quickly from all the flesh it had consumed. It was now over six feet tall and didn't resemble a squirrel very much at all. It was eating noisily, tearing off pieces of skin from a veterinarian. His face was gone and his gleaming skull protruded through gaps in the flesh. His eyeballs had been ripped out, I noticed, and his feet and left arm were missing. Mr. Peanut Butter, I heard my voice saying without thinking. His head whipped around and I quickly realized this thing was no longer my friend. I tried to back up and reach for the door behind me, but it was already too late. It raced towards me on its powerful hind legs and possibly fast. Its long, sharp teeth bared and dripping as it lunged at my neck. It was covered in blood and slippery. I managed somehow to stop its face from biting my throat. It came at quite a cost. My hand ended up in that thing's mouth as I tried to push it away. Its sharp teeth bit into my hand and blood went everywhere as that thing bit down again and again gnawing on me and taking strips off of my flesh. Its eyes were red and its face was pure hatred. Its long tongue lapped up blood like it was chocolate syrup dripping from an ice cream sundae. The dogs and cats in their kennels were howling and barking and hissing now, cheering me on, my crazed mind thought. I wondered if the creature's long teeth could puncture metal bars. I looked around desperately for a weapon, anything that would help. There was a mechanical pencil on the desk next to me and I grabbed it with my free hand. I plunged it into Mr. Peanut Butter's eyeball and watched his black blood sprayed out everywhere. The creature howled in fury and pain and increased its attack, swiping at my belly with its long and impossibly sharp claws. I stabbed the pencil into its head again and again, trying to reach into the soft tissue of its brain through its ear, nose, its eye socket, any opening I thought might allow me entry to the horrifying gray matter of my giant pet squirrel's mutated brain. The black liquid poured out from the creature's wounds and mingled with mine, seeping into the holes in my hand where the bite marks were and planting its poison in my veins. I felt my blood turn ice cold. Still, I stabbed and stabbed and stabbed. 
Eventually, I noticed the thing wasn't moving anymore. I felt a little bad, thinking back to all the good times I had before with my pal, my chum, my little baby squirrel I had found on the side of the road. A kitten mewed from one of the cages. I opened the latch and it crawled out onto my shoulder. It burrowed its tiny head into my neck and I enjoyed its warmth, so I kept it. I walked out of there and went straight home, not telling anyone what happened. I'm still trying to figure out what to name the little guy. Maybe Sonic. I used to love that game. Plus, he's really fast. Not to mention the rings which now cover him from head to toe. He's growing too. And quickly. Quickly.